Welcome to the Scandinavian Mind podcast. I'm Conrad Olsen, founder and editor-in-chief of Scandinavian Mind. Today we are revisiting a talk from the Transformation Conference, a fashion tech event we hosted together with Uni Communication in Helsinki on May 31st, 2022. In the midst of the most transformative period that fashion has ever seen, we wanted to explore how Finland and Sweden could deepen their impact on the industry together. This panel talk was titled, How to Market and Communicate Fashion Tech. How do you communicate innovation in a visual industry? We hear practical examples on creative marketing and learn about the need for radical transparency in order to make the consumer a decision maker. Speakers were Reta Hassinen, Business Development Manager at Spinova and Matilda Kivele, Strategist at Reactor. The Transformation Conference is a two-part event and the second edition takes place in Stockholm on August 25, 2022 during Nordic Fabric Fair. If you want to get an invite to that event, please make sure you subscribe to our newsletter. Visit scandinavianmind.com slash newsletter. Here now, the panel with Reta Hassinen and Matilda Kivele. Enjoy. A round of applause. I'm going to start with you, that uh, You obviously represent Spinova. You're the first out here of, of uh, uh, the sort of innovation companies that we, we brought into this conference. I think we just start with an overview of uh, Spinova. What are you bringing to the market? And, and talk a little bit about the technology behind it. Sure. Thanks for having me here. Um, so Spinova's technology is a completely new way of making textile fibers. Traditionally, usually, m- way of making textile fibers is relying on chemicals, quite harsh chemicals, even toxic ones like in viscose process, let's say. Um, but Spinova is doing things completely differently. We do not use any harmful chemicals. We just mechanically refine materials into textile fibers. And that means that our product uh, has a very small environmental footprint. It's safe for the workers and people around the fiber. And it has also very interesting properties, like this natural feel that it has. So yes, that's, that's our technology. And it's also quite exciting that we can use many kinds of raw materials, like not only, let's say, wood, or, but also waste materials, even uh, leather waste, which is something that the industry has not seen before. Mm. Uh, so, I mean, I, I find it fascinating and, and quite encouraging, actually, that we, we're now talking about materials brands such as Pinova in, in this kind of fashion context. Mm-hmm. So I think, I mean, only just a couple of years ago, uh, we wouldn't talk about the companies making the fibers of the clothes. Um, I was curious to to hear where you see yourself, because we're going to look at some of the collaborations you've done, and they're really high-profile collaborations with fashion brands, but how do you see yourself, uh, your position in the fashion industry? Yeah, so we are a sustainable material company. We provide textile fibers, yarns, fabrics, depending on what the uh, customer needs. And our customer is um, mainly uh, fashion brands. And what we offer is not only the physical fiber, but we also offer access to a brand and data that you can use for tracking and traceability. Wonderful. And before we go on, Matilda, I'm going to let you into the conversation, but just give us a a bit of a headline, because you've done uh, some really interesting uh, collaborations with fashion brands can we and we see some uh, um, I think we see some imagery yeah. um, uh, talk talk to us about those collaborations and uh, sure um, so since the beginning uh, Spinova's ad- approach has been that we work together with brands and really go develop our product and uh, we have been 
um, lucky to be able to uh, partner with brands like Adidas, the Northways, Face, uh, Marimekko, to name a few. And um, this year has been actually very exciting for us um, because this spring we have been launching our first uh, commercial products, like this shirt by Arket. And we are also building our first commercial scale factory that will be ready uh, by the end of this year. So, loads of things happening for us to, uh, this year, and um, very, very exciting to see, uh, to get this uh, material to stores. Wonderful. Matilda, you work with uh, a Reactor. I know you're creative yourself, but you work with Reactor as an advisor. Um, just maybe perhaps begin with introducing yourself and what type of work you do with, with Reactor, and I'm happy to, to have you... Uh, bounce off of the topics that we're doing here. Yes, perfectly. Um, and around two years ago, or a couple years ago, we decided that we actually needed a creative unit inside the technology company, because all of these great companies that we're serving really were lacking this kind of holistic partner that could provide the technology solution, but also provide everything after that. So storytelling, marketing, brand strategy, everything that comes after the product. Um, so we really offer these holistic solutions, starting from the very product up until the moment when uh, all these things are on these beautiful screens. Wonderful. I mean, I know you work with brands all over the place, and some of them are actually fashion brands and, and so forth. But, you know, I, I mentioned this, this uh, phenomenon of, of us talking about materials companies mm -hmm. in the fashion uh, um, context right now. What opportunities do you see for, for companies like Spinova, for instance? So basically, it's kind of twofold. We're entering this kind of new era where people are really demanding this very, like, big transparency and this factor of kind of knowing everything. So when you look at the field of fashion, especially then coming to brands like Spinova, you already have that innately in you. So instead of going out there to find something new or to create something new or spin a new story, you can actually kind of go into your core and then harness that for that. And when it comes to the materials, but in a way, we've always talked about materials, silk and wool and angora. We're quite material conscious already, but come, kind of bringing these Spinova, like Spinova or Renew Cell of anything else that becomes truly sustainable, we just have to place it in the same context. So instead of having like exclusive luxury, we have sustainable luxury. So we really place it into this context of fashion that already exists in a way. Uh, and Rieta, we, we heard from uh, Fredrik here before when doing his research that it's hard for the consumers to kind of decode the data, decode the, the information. And, uh, when you are creating the, the communication for, for Spinova, how do you balance this? Because you have to explain what you're doing on the one hand, on the other hand you know that the consumer maybe don't want more information. How do you go about creating that communication and that sort of brand value, I guess? That is a very good question and it is, it, it is very, very tricky and difficult to actually balance between telling enough information that the consumer can make the decision, but not to kind of provide too much and uh, to, to overflow the, the information. Um, so it's, it's very difficult. When one, one thing how we kind of have been balancing our, our comms and, and marketing is that we base our storytelling a lot around nature. And that's a very natural thing for us because our technology is actually kind of inspired uh, about nature and inspired about uh, how spiders weave their web. So it has been quite kind of a good, good uh, starting point for our uh, story to, to talk about the nature and how we can be inspired and learn from the nature itself. Give us the story, how spider webs are done. Can we, can we give us the, the analogy there? That's a very, yeah, I'm not a physicist here, uh, but um, our co-founder was actually listening to a lecture at Oxford University back in 2009. And he was a researcher uh, at VTT, the, the Technical Research Center here in Finland. And um, he was listening to a lecture about how spiders weave their web. And that's a physical reaction. There is like a specific... Um, Form, form of the, the uh, spider body that enables the, the spider silk creation. And uh, our co-founder, Juha, he has been 
researching nanocellulose for his whole career for, for decades. And then he kind of got this idea, like, what if I, what if I combine my knowledge in this nanocellulose uh, research area and how spiders weave their web? And um, that's the story from more than 10 years ago. And it has been a long, long journey, but very interesting one. And Matilda, I know you are a big proponent for uh, storytelling. Uh, how would you go about sort of tackling a situation like Spinova, for instance, where you have this sort of technical uh, solution in the beginning? Mm -hmm. uh, where do you see the opportunity for, for brands like Spinova there? I mean, hearing that the talk, it's like really nice because that's obviously a brand strategist dream. They already have a really great story that's already really tangible. But basically, you're trying to build something tangible out of something intangible. And Rath already kind of touched upon data and using data. When customers want transparency, they want the data, but they also need it in some form that places it into their context. So we can't just, like we've heard from multiple people today already, we can't just push information and knowledge as is. We really need to build that into a story that either changes the way that the consumer sees the world or changes the way the consumer sees themselves. And I mean, data for companies like Spinova, uh, it's not just cosmetic. We can start providing uh, brands as services. Maybe Spinova could uh, innovate on, on some data-driven service that would really benefit their end customer uh, and help them understand their consuming habits or, or what their wardrobe looks like. Right. <clears throat> and can you talk at all about your process of, of doing that at, at Reactor? Uh, what, what's the, the way of working and creating these stories? And well, we really try to put ourselves in the role of a listener and a collaborator. So, say, uh, Reto would come into our office, we'd start by really getting to know one another and trying to figure out what actually started the company. So, it really starts with the why, like we had before. The why isn't enough. We also need to tell the story of what. Mm. Um, so, really really finding the truths that make a company unique, finding the truths that make a, a product unique or a product something that could change the world because, I mean, the space for, for our attention is, is always so limited. Right, and uh, Rieta, you call yourself an ingredient brand. I thought that was a really fascinating thing. Uh, and it, I think it speaks to your kind of role in, in the fashion uh, ecosystem. But what do you mean by an ingredient brand? Can we define that? Sure. So we are never the master brand. So that is the role of the fashion brand, let's say. And we are a, let's say, supporting brand that uh, tells the consumer that this product is made out of sustainable materials. And um, our goal is to be kind of Gore-Tex of sustainability. Uh, what does it mean is that if you go to a store and you find a, um, let's say, a jacket made out of Gore-Tex, you kind of know that, okay, this is going to be a water repellent or waterproof material. I can trust on it that it's going to work. Uh, for my, for my purposes, whatever those are. Um, so the, the idea of, of, of our uh, brand is the same. So basically, when a consumer goes to a store, sees a um, piece of clothing made out of uh, Spinova, they know that, okay, this is sustainable. I can trust that this is uh, something that is made as, as well as possible, and uh, I can be uh, kind of uh, happy uh, buying it, or kind of at least feel good about buying it. That's an interesting analogy with being sort of the Gore-Tex of, mm -hmm. of materials. Uh, can you talk at all about your dialogue with the fashion brands? You mentioned Arcade and Adidas and so forth. What are they looking for when they come to you guys? I'm assuming they come to you. Maybe you come to them as well. I don't know. But can you talk at all about that relationship? Yeah, sure. Mostly like the, the first option. So we have been reached by, uh, by many brands and it has been a very honor to... to get so many uh, requests from world-class brands, brands. And um, so, uh, as I mentioned, we, we really do go development together um, because our material is still quite new. Um, but what brands are really looking for is, I guess, like this having material that has a story already within. Mm. And our story is, is around... Uh, the kind of natural component. And uh, for instance, our visual, visual identity centers around uh, nature, uh, technology, and humanity. And that is also reflected on the, uh, the pic uh, pictures behind us. And that has been resonating very well with the brands. 
So we have been seeing that uh, um, our brand partner partners are willing to use our brand assets uh, very well. That's interesting. It's kind of a validation. Is that where you yes. see the opportunity as well, Matilda? That, that these sort of material brands that come in with technology and sort of these granular materials and fibers and so forth, they provide kind of a stamp of approval for, for these big fashion brands? I mean, definitely and, and absolutely. But then right now, currently today, if you walk into a fast fashion store, for instance, you get bombarded with, with uh, kind of uh, sustainability communication that carries the monikers of sustainability. It might be on a cardboard, uh, mm. a little cardboard board slab or it might say recycled but then but then you really with spinova you're fighting against that you're fighting against this kind of a blanket of not maybe misinformation but a slight tweaking of truth or like a slight uh, you know doing hair and makeup on the some truth. call it greenwashing i don't know have you heard that term <laughs> maybe, yeah maybe that exactly um, Rieta, give us a, a kind of a, a sense of where you are in your journey as a company right now. I know you're kind of a, a startup. I don't know if you define yourself as a startup still, but, but uh, how do you see the, the roadmap and, and uh, how do you want to put your, your product to scale, so to speak? Yeah, very good question. Uh, so I would not define ourselves as a startup anymore. Uh, we did a successful IPO last year and kind of I think that was kind of a turning point of becoming a scale-up. And um, as, as mentioned, we have a very exciting year um, this year because um, the first commercial scale factory will be ready here in Finland and that will be up and running early next year. Um, but it will be not only that. Uh, so our plan is to reach uh, a production capacity of 1 million tons by the next, uh, over the next uh, 10 to 12 years. And 1 million tons per annum is it's still, it sounds very big and it means quite much of capacity, but it's still kind of a, only the beginning of, of the kind of being a scalable and um, mainstream material of the future, hopefully. So, but uh, yeah, very exciting and we have very big growth targets as well. So. Wonderful. And if there anything you can, is there an ask to the fashion community from you guys? What what are you what do you want to see from the fashion community in, in terms of creating new collaborations or using your product or engaging with with the brand? That's a very good question. Uh, one thing that we would like to see, if, of course, kind of really engaging in partnerships and kind of seeing the commitment yeah. of brands, not only commitment in, in sustainability, but also in us and kind of working together. And one aspect of that is, I think, also being radically transparent about the materials. Mm. And um, we have been working towards that um, by building our capabilities to, to collect data uh, of our production uh, to really be able to track down every kilograms that we produce. Um, so if the brands are willing and open to use the data, we do have that. But that kind of just needs that the brands are also willing to use the data and uh, be open and transparent. Right. Brands, take care of the data. All right. Uh, it's not in the schedule, but I felt like we do need a short break here. Uh, midway, uh, we'll be back in, let's say, 15 minutes. Let's stretch our legs, maybe get some more uh, air into this space. I don't know if we have coffee. We have coffee for everyone. That's great. So, uh, 22. Thank you very much. And a round of applause. That was an outtake from the Transformation Conference in Helsinki in May of 2022. The Transformation Conference is a two-part event and the second edition takes place in Stockholm on August 25, 2022 during Nordic Fabric Fair. If you want to get an invite to that event, please make sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Visit scandinavianmind.com newsletter. Until next time, goodbye.